it. This video is for senior high history, the highlights from pages 430 to 436. So we've looked at um, the spread of communism in Latin America and in Asia. We've looked at the spread of liberalism in the West, um, liberal prime ministers and uh, weak and liberal presidents in the United States, uh, allowing for the spread of welfare, uh, economic um, slowdowns have been happening, but now we're going to look at the rise of conservatism in the West. So some of the things that conservatives uh, stood for are listed in the first paragraph on page 430. Individual liberty as opposed to collective security that's offered by a welfare state. Free enterprise and sound money as opposed to Keynesian manipulation and bureaucratic regulation. Uh, Keynesia Keynesianism basically stands for spending your way out of debt. It's extremely oxymoronic. Everybody knows that you can't spend more money to get your way out of debt. Uh, other things they stood for included local government and states' rights as opposed to the concentration of power at the federal level. That's what the Constitution is supposed to allow for, is balanced power between states and the federal system. And the fourth thing is firmness and strength in the teeth of communist aggression as opposed to retreat and compromise. So under conservative victories in Britain and America, find Margaret Thatcher in bold, highlight conservative Margaret Thatcher became Britain's first woman prime minister. Her nickname was the Iron Lady because she was, uh, she was very tough, very decisive, and she uh, stayed in her position until 1990. So she was the longest ruling leader of Britain in the 20th century. Quite an accomplishment in itself. Um, so her election in Britain uh, brought about lower tax taxes, um, cutting of government spending, reducing welfare dependency, and overall improvement in the British economy. Her election was followed the next year by the uh, conservative victory of Ronald Reagan in the United States. And his rhetoric uh, was a big deal, what helped to get him elected. Remember that the United States had just come through the Vietnam conflict, and that um, greatly decreased morale and patriotism in the country. Um, the economy was um, simply dismal at the time. The uh, hostages were still being held in Iran. Remember, uh, Carter had done virtually nothing to free them. And it was just overall um, just a low time and not a good situation. So Reagan uh, is running and he's promoting um, you know, patriotism, love for your country. He was running on a platform of cutting government spending, cutting taxes, deregulating businesses, um, and that, uh, that really helped him to win. And the Reagan years, the years that he was president, became um, the longest period of vigorous and continuous economic growth since World War II. So he brought about big improvements. Under renewed patriotism on page 431, highlight Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands. The good old UN disapproved of any military action here, but Margaret Thatcher, our Iron Lady, made a decisive response and sent a large contingent of British troops to take back the islands. The war was brief uh, but bloody and the most extensive naval conflict since World War II. And it was some of the longest bombing missions in the history of warfare. Uh, they had British bombers that had the, um, the capacity, the fuel capacity, to fly all the way from England to bomb the Falkland Islands and then return. That's a 12,000 mile round trip. So that was a pretty big deal. And uh, this victory here brought about uh, a huge wave of patriotism in, uh, in Great Britain. And it's the greatest display of national pride since the end of World War II. So quite an accomplishment in and of itself. Under standing up to communism, highlight Reagan doctrine. Highlight this was an offensive policy of preemptive stripes to stop communism before it could enslave a nation. So direct opposition here to the containment policies that had been around uh, since the 1950s. No longer uh, would Reagan allow for simply uh, holding communism where it was, which proved to be entirely ineffective. Communism still spread in Vietnam, uh, in Korea, 
and throughout much of Asia and Latin America. So containment clearly did not work. On the second column, um, highlight that the Reagan doctrine was upheld by sending troops to Granada. Highlight that Fidel Castro was using this as a military base to invade mainland South America. Under communist tragedies, highlight KAL 007. And highlight this was a South Korean airliner. And uh, this was quite a tragedy. Uh, Soviet fighter jets shot down this flight. It had left Alaska for South Korea. They claimed that it was a spy plane over Russian airspace. But it was not a spy plane, and they killed all 269 passengers. And it was a pretty grim reminder of just the uh, outright disregard for human life that the communists held. Under that, highlight another tragedy took place in 1986 at a nuclear reactor plant in Chernobyl. Highlight that this was located in Soviet Ukraine and that a reactor meltdown killed 23 people. Uh, investigations afterward um, showed that there was substandard antiquated equipment and extremely inefficient monitoring procedures. And it was uh, pretty typical of the deteriorating uh, economic system at the time. Turning to page 432, towards the bottom of the first column, under problems in Poland, highlight solidarity and highlight Lech Walesa. Solidarity was a movement of Polish nationalists who were opposing communism and Soviet rule in Poland. And Lech Walesa was their leader. On the second column, highlight Mikhail Gorbachev came to power as the leader of the Soviet Union. And um, he was aware of the difficulties that were growing within the Soviet Empire. And he was fearing the buildup of the American military and military supplies in America under Reagan. So they began some peace talks, limitation of nuclear arms, uh, things like that. I'll let you finish reading about it. On page 433, highlight the bold term perestroika and highlight that this meant restructuring. They also adopted a policy known as glasnost, highlight that as well, and highlight that it means openness. They were claiming that they wanted world peace and had no further plans of conquest. Uh, what it really was is that they were, they were hoping to um, catch up and surpass the free world at a future date. They realized that what they were doing wasn't necessarily working. They were far behind the Western world. Uh, there was a lot of weaknesses within the Union and uh, they wanted to uh, they wanted to solve their financial problems and be able to catch up uh, militarily. And that's what a lot of this really was about. Um, I'll let you finish reading about the changes in Eastern Europe there. Turning to page 434, highlight the date 1990 and highlight that East and West Germany were officially reunited. You see a picture there of Germans tearing down the Berlin Wall in 1989. And that was a pretty, uh, pretty amazing deal. Under more revolutions, highlight Romania, highlight execution of the cruel dictator Nicolae Ceausescu. That's a pretty terrible guy that completed the overthrow of communism there in Romania. Under Tiananmen Square, highlight the bold term Tiananmen Square, and uh, know that this took place in China. A million university students and workers gathered in Tiananmen Square in a demonstration for freedom. Uh, they had a replica of the Statue of Liberty, um, a lot of them were uh, waving signs in English and American flags, 
and the communist government um, sent soldiers to crush the demonstrations. Thousands were killed and many more were imprisoned. And there's a, there's a famous picture of a student who remained in the street uh, facing down uh, a tank that was coming at him. It was a, a cruel crushing of, uh, of this demonstration that was just asking for freedom. Um, last thing on page 434, um, this starts at the very end of the second column and goes on to page 435. Last couple words of the second column highlight the president of the Russian Republic, Boris Yeltsin. So that continues on to page 435. Know who he was. And then on the second column of that page, highlight by December 1991, most of the former Soviet republics had banded together to form the Commonwealth of Independent States, or CIS. And at this point, the Soviet Union had officially ceased to exist as a nation. All right, and then that's the last of the highlights. Make sure that you uh, complete your reading thoroughly and uh, do your homework. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, next week, of course, is our scheduled spring break. So I hope you guys have a good one. Um, I know there's not a whole lot to do, but stay safe and enjoy your spring break.